The origins of one of the most iconic car brands in the world can be traced back to the late 19th century. Ferdinand Porsche, the man behind Porsche, was born in a small village in the Austro-Hungarian Empire in 1875. His father ran a blacksmithing business, but Ferdinand had no interest in continuing the family trade. Instead, he focused on his studies and developed a passion for electricity. Despite his father's disapproval, he continued to experiment with electric circuits and even built his own electric generator. Eventually, Ferdinand enrolled in the Imperial Technical School of Reichenberg, where he honed his engineering skills. Within a few months, he was able to install electric light bulbs throughout his family's home. His father finally recognized his son's talent and allowed him to pursue his passion for engineering. In the late 19th century, Ferdinand Porsche left his home and landed his first job at Bella Egger & Co., a manufacturer of electric machinery in Vienna. He quickly rose through the ranks due to his brilliance as a skilled engineer and was soon recognized as the man in charge. While working at Bella Egger, Ferdinand Porsche built the company's first electric wheel hub motor, which was designed to be attached to any vehicle's wheel to move it directly. During this time, the first automobiles began to emerge and Ferdinand had ideas for using his motor in these new vehicles. After five years working for Bella Egger, he moved on to work for Jacob Lohner & Co., where he used his electric motors to build his first ever automobile, the Porsche P1, a fully electric car built using a wooden carriage. The car was meant for racing and had an approximate 49 mile range, but due to the heavy lead acid batteries it carried, the car could only go up to 21 miles per hour. Ferdinand continued to improve the design of his vehicle until he added an internal combustion engine to power the electric motors, creating the world's first gasoline electric hybrid car, the Loner Porsche Electromobile, which won several motorsports events and set speed records. In 1908, Porsche left Loner and joined Daimler, where he designed his first purely patrol motor automobile, the Austro Daimler Maya. His time at the company proved to be a big stepping stone in his career leading to his big break in the racing world when he developed his next automobile, the Austro Daimler Model 27 8 Hats. This 85 horsepower vehicle was capable of reaching top speeds of 85 miles per hour and was specifically built for the popular Prince Henry trial race in 1910, where it took first, second, and third place victory. After the end of World War I, Ferdinand Porsche returned to building race cars and continued to build the Mercedes-Benz S-Series, which more or less paved the way for high-performance sports cars that were suitable for both racing and the public. He then introduced what is arguably one of the fastest and greatest sports cars of his era, the Mercedes-Benz SSK. This car had a 7.1-liter six-cylinder engine powered by 200 horsepower and was a true masterpiece. After the introduction of the car, Ferdinand Porsche grew dissatisfied with the disagreements he had with the Mercedes-Benz board. This led him to leave the company and work for a different car manufacturer. Unfortunately, this new company collapsed shortly after due to the Great Depression, leaving Porsche unemployed during a time of economic crisis. However, he saw this as an opportunity to make a significant decision for his career and founded his own car company, Porsche Gimmey, bringing in many former associates to work for his new venture including his son Ferry Porsche, who also showed great promise in designing and engineering. Initially, Porsche Gimma offered consulting and motor development projects for other car manufacturers, but struggled to take off due to the lack of demand for automobiles in a country still recovering from the economic effects of World War I. However, in 1933, Adolf Hitler became the Chancellor of Germany and took a particular interest in automobiles. He recruited Porsche, along with other top car engineers in the country, to design the Volkswagen, a car that would be fuel efficient, cheap, and could seat a family of five. Porsche submitted his design and won the contract for Hitler, which set up an unlikely but beneficial relationship between the two. Porsche's team began working on building the Volkswagen Beetle, a two-door car with an air-cooled engine in the back that required minimal maintenance and was fuel efficient. With a mileage of 31.4 miles per gallon, an impressive feat even by today's standards. The Beetle proved to be a massive success, with 300,000 orders placed soon after its introduction. However, as the Volkswagen factory was preparing to mass-produce the car, 
another significant event occurred that would negatively impact Porsche's career trajectory. In the year 1939, a major event took place which marked the beginning of the Second World War, the invasion of Poland by Hitler. This led to Great Britain and France declaring war against Germany. As a result, the general production of the Volkswagen Beetle was immediately put on hold as the Volkswagen factory shifted its focus to war production. Being one of the best engineers in the country and a close friend of Hitler, Porsche found himself inevitably embroiled in military projects for the Nazi army. He began developing off-road military vehicles and battle machinery, such as the Schimwagen, the military version of the Beetle, the Elephant Tank Destroyer, and the V1 Flying Bomb Missile. However, even though Porsche was among Hitler's favorite engineers when it came to designing tanks, he could not meet Hitler's expectations. There was a contest held by Hitler to see who would win the contract to mass-produce the Tiger, a heavy tank that would be used in the war. Porsche designed the Ferdinand, a hybrid tank that could run on patrol and electric transmissions. Although the tank was a revolutionary design, its engines were far too complicated and over-engineered, which led to many problems and eventually broke down during the trial. After losing the contest to Henschel and Son, Porsche found himself in a huge mess. Before he even submitted his prototype, he had already built 100 chassis for his concept. To salvage his designs, the Germans turned 90 Ferdinand heavy tanks into tank destroyers and renamed them as Elephant Anti-Tanks. They became very effective in the war, but due to their engine problems and mobility issues, most of them broke down and were lost on the battlefield. It is worth noting that the Porsche company reportedly used slave laborers in their Stuttgart factory. Although the company had previously denied these accusations and defended themselves by claiming to be a small office during the war, they later admitted to their crimes after dozens of people spoke out in the late 20th century detailing their capture and forced labor conditions in Porsche's plans at the hands of the German regime. In response to this, Porsche has given millions of euros to funds and compensations for the victims of forced laborers. At the time, it was common practice for German factories that had large numbers of workers to use slave labor, often prisoners of war who were paid very little or not at all, and were frequently worked to death. However, despite working with the Nices, Ferdinand Porsche didn't really agree with their ideology. He was rarely known to raise his arm in Hitler's salute, and his baggy gray coat always stood out during marches in a sea of otherwise brown uniforms. As for the SS rank that he received from the Nazi party, Porsche simply ignored it. He was only interested in growing his business and supplying what the government needed at the time. Despite their inhuman practices, thanks to his contributions, the Porsche company went from making 3,000 rate marks in profit in 1934 to over 2 million by 1944. Nevertheless, his part in the war efforts came at a heavy price. After the war ended, Ferdinand Porsche was arrested by the French government and sent to prison for war crimes due to his SS membership and his close relationship with Hitler. With him in prison, it was now down to one man to take on the torch and lead the Porsche brand in a new and brighter direction. That man was Ferdinand's only son, Ferry Porsche. Ferry Porsche was an avid lover of machines and inherited this passion from his father. He was a talented engineer who had already built several vehicles including the Schwimmwagen, a car designed to work both on land and in water. During the war, this car was of great service to the German soldiers, but Ferry and his father were both arrested and thrown into jail for several months. Ferry was only released so that he could raise the money to bail his father out of prison. He raised the funds by signing a contract with an Italian car manufacturer and building an advanced vehicle called the Cittitalia 360, which was meant to participate in Grand Prix races but never got the chance. Ferry's success with the Cisitalia 360 allowed him to free his father from jail after 22 months. However, Ferdinand Porsche's health had severely deteriorated due to the terrible conditions in which he was held, and he was unable to return to work. The responsibility fell on Ferry to take over and apply his father's ideas to the new company. Ferry noticed that the car manufacturer he previously worked for was building small sports cars with a Fiat engine and he asked himself why they couldn't do the same with Volkswagen parts. He met with the managing director of Volkswagen and struck a deal that allowed him to use their parts and distribution network. He also provided documents proving that the Volkswagen Beetle was developed by his father before the war, which convinced Volkswagen to pay a license fee to Porsche 
for every VW Beetle they built. These negotiations showcased Ferry's skills not only as an engineer, but also as a brilliant businessman. Most importantly, they provided the Porsche company with the financial resources they needed to begin developing their own vehicles. In 1948, Ferry introduced the first car that would bear the family's name, the Porsche 356, a small two-door roadster powered by a Volkswagen air-cooled engine. Although it wasn't the most powerful or fastest car, Ferry continued to improve the design, eventually making it faster and smoother to drive. In its debut year, the car won first place at a race in Innsbruck, Austria, laying the foundation for Porsche's future success in the racing world. Despite initially low sales, the Porsche 356 was loved by car enthusiasts, including Ferry's father, who was proud of his son's success. Ferdinand Porsche visited the Volkswagen factory one last time in 1950 and was happy to see his vision for the Beetle finally being realized. Sadly, he passed away only a year later at the age of 75 and did not live to see how the Porsche brand would expand all over the world. The success of Porsche 356 at the Le Mans race in 1951, soon followed by the introduction of newer models such as 356 Speedster and 356 Carrera, quickly captured the hearts of sports drivers and celebrities. However, the 356 was only a variation of the Beetle with minor changes, and the customers were growing weary of its body design. So, in order to remain recognizable as their brand, Porsche needed to design and build something completely new. One of Ferry Porsche's sons, Alexander Porsche, stepped in and began designing one of the most iconic sports cars in modern history the Porsche 911. The 911 was far more powerful than the 356. It replaced a four-cylinder from its predecessor with a six-cylinder boxer engine, and it had an air-cooled engine in the rear, which improved the steering and acceleration of the vehicle. These elements combined allowed for a driving experience so smooth it could not be matched by any other automobile. The new model was launched in September of 1964 quickly becoming Porsche's best-selling vehicle. Porsche continued delivering what the people wanted, launching faster models with more horsepower, such as the 911 Carrera S and 911 Turbo, which drove the company's annual sales to the over 20,000 units by the 1970s. Porsche further cemented itself as one of the leading sports car brands on the market by expanding into the racing world and conquering numerous rally and GT championships, becoming one of the most successful competition cars in history. However, as time went by, the Porsche family stepped down from their roles at the company, marking the end of their involvement in the company. Nevertheless, Porsche kept upgrading to better and more sporty vehicles, and they cemented themselves as one of the leading sports car brands on the market. In 1986, the Porsche company faced a big drop in the dollar exchange rate an overall cost of high-quality production of their vehicles, causing many problems. By 1991, their sales dropped to 23,000 units, which was half the number of cars they'd sold just five years prior. The company's losses amounted to 240 million Deutsche Marks, and by the end of 1993, Porsche was barely scraping by, selling around 14,000 units per year. In order to survive, the company needed to make a drastic decision and they made the bold move of announcing that they were going into the SUV business, which received a lot of backlashes. Despite all the controversy, Porsche introduced the Cayenne in 2002, which not only became their best-selling vehicle, but also a fan favorite. And this depicts perfectly how gold is made, a brand that sets the golden standards for vehicular businesses, through thick and thin, Porsche for the win. If this video was one that took you on a roller coaster ride, hang in there, because we've got more coming. To make sure you get to know about them, hit the subscribe button. See you next time.